She had paid for an amazing tropical vacation with her friends in Mexico, but less than 24 hours after they arrived at their beautiful villa, one of these friends was calling a doctor. The doctor was told that someone in the group had drank too much and had alcohol poisoning. But was that all there really was to the story? Welcome, or welcome back. I'm Cassie, and this is A Wicked World. If you haven't heard of the story that I have for you today, it's a crazy one. This woman went on what was supposed to be a fun-filled trip to Mexico, but she never ended up returning back home. Alive. The people she believed were her friends were anything but. In this case, I feel so bad for her family. But anyways, let's get into the story and you can tell me how you feel about it at the end. You're going to be pissed, I'm pretty sure, but we'll see. This is the story of Shanquella Robinson. Shanquella Robinson was born on January 9th, 1997 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Her mother's name is Salamandra Robinson and her father is Bernard Robinson. Shanquella was beautiful and known to be a very sweet, humble, and hardworking woman. She had graduated from West Charlotte High School and attended Winston-Salem State University in North Carolina. She owned two businesses, a hair braiding company, and she also had a women's clothing line. On October 28, 2022, Shanquella took a trip to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico with a few friends and acquaintances. These other people have been identified as Khalil Cook, Malik St. Patrick Dyer, Winter Essence Donovan, Elise Michelle Hyatt, Dejeuner Jackson, and Nazir Wiggins. They were later nicknamed the Cabo Six. Shanquella is said to have paid for the beautiful five-bedroom, six-bathroom villa that they were all staying at. This luxury villa was located at the Puerto Los Cabos Resort, and they were there to celebrate a few friends' birthdays. So Shanquella paid for most of the trip, and Dejeuner Jackson was the one who planned it. Now, the two of them knew each other for a few years as they had gone to college together. Though they weren't really very good friends, they were more of acquaintances. But they shared a mutual friend, and that was Khalil. Shanquella called Khalil her best friend. He had known her and her family for years. He had even gone on some family vacations with them. So even though Shanquella wasn't very close to all of the people on the trip, she decided to go anyways because she was a very outgoing person and she had a few friends there, so she figured that she would get along with everybody. Now, the night that the group arrived, Friday, October 28th, Shanquella called her mom before dinner and told her that at the villa, they had a private chef coming to cook dinner for them that night. She sounded very excited and in high spirits. She promised her mom that she would give her a call back the next day. But at 2.13 p.m. the very next day, a doctor from the American Medical Center was called to the villa. The concierge had been asked by Dejeuner to contact the medical center because someone in their group had alcohol poisoning. At around the same time, Shanquella's mother, Salamandra Robinson, received a phone call from Khalil, letting her know that her daughter had fallen ill and the doctor was on the way to see her. He told her that Shanquella had drank too much and she had alcohol poisoning. He never mentioned that she should probably go to the hospital, but he did tell Shanquella's mom that he would keep her updated and call her back later. So the doctor arrived about an hour after the phone call was placed. Why it took so long, I'm not sure. I don't know if the seriousness of the situation was not properly expressed or if it just took that long for them to get there. When the doctor got there, she said that she found Shanquilla in stable condition, but she was dehydrated, unable to verbally communicate, disoriented, and appeared to be intoxicated. That's what they wrote in the official report. The doctor told the group that Shanquilla should probably go to the hospital to be seen. But they said no, they wanted her to stay there and have the doctor take care of her in the room. Red flag number one. Why would you not want her to go to the hospital? 
The doctor said that Shanquella's vital signs were normal at first, but she tried to administer an IV drip and was unable to. At 4.13 p.m., about an hour after the doctor arrived, Shanquella started to seize. At that time, 911 was called and an ambulance was sent to the resort. Shanquella was having trouble breathing and her pulse was dropping. Shanquella had gone into cardiac arrest. The paramedics arrived at 4.49 and they tried desperately to revive her. They gave Shanquella 14 rounds of CPR as well as five adrenaline shots to try to get her to come back. But after all their attempts, they were unsuccessful and Shanquella was pronounced dead at 5.57 p.m. October 29th, 2022. Police officers spoke with the other members of the group that were in the villa that day to see what had happened. They also spoke with the doctor that had treated Shanquella. And after doing all that, they concluded that she had simply died of alcohol poisoning. There was no foul play and it was simply an accident. The report said that Shanquella had died two hours and 45 minutes after the doctor had initially arrived. It also said that there were no external or internal injuries observed at the time. Khalil called Shanquella's parents to give them the terrible news. And they said later that when they spoke with him, he sounded rather flat and really not that upset considering his best friend had just passed away. On top of that, Shanquella's family was becoming suspicious of the claims that her travel companions had been making. When Khalil had told Shanquella's mom that she had alcohol poisoning, she was surprised because a doctor hadn't arrived yet, so how would they have been able to know that she had alcohol poisoning? She also said that her daughter was not normally the kind of person that would drink in excess, so she had a hard time believing that she had drank so much she gave herself alcohol poisoning. Khalil was also the one who brought Shanquella's luggage back to her family in North Carolina. Shanquella's mother asked him while he was there if there was something he was keeping from her, but he told her no, there wasn't. But also, he didn't tell her about the fight that Shanquella had been part of prior to her death. And when Shanquella's mother spoke with the other travel companions once they arrived back in the United States, they all seemed to have different stories. And their stories had inconsistencies in them as well. Some of them claimed that the maid had been the one to find Shanquella unconscious, while others said that it was one of them who had found her unconscious. It was also said that Khalil had made the phone call for the doctor, but then other people said that the concierge had actually been the one to make the phone call to the hospital. And as you know, at first they had claimed that Shanquella had died of alcohol poisoning, but a few days later, they admitted that she had been jumped and been in a fight. But they did not say who the fight was with. And regarding the location of Shanquella once she was unconscious, her travel companions raised further skepticism for her family as well as the public. One of them said they found her on the floor unconscious. Another one said they found her in bed unconscious. And yet another person said that they actually found her in a chair unconscious. So they didn't do a very good job talking this over and making sure they had the same story before they started talking, clearly. Huge inconsistencies. Another red flag. Another thing that was odd was when Shanquella's mother had been called when the doctor was on the way, she had suggested that her daughter be taken to an emergency room because she knew she had travel insurance. But her daughter's travel companions had told Shanquella's mother that her insurance was of no use in Mexico. And they later said if they brought her to the emergency room, it would be $5,000 in cash, which doesn't really make sense because Mexico is usually cheaper than the United States when it comes to different things like healthcare. The group was supposed to be there from Friday, October 28th until Monday, October 31st. Yet they were looking at early return flights that were going back days earlier than they were originally planning to. You're only going for three nights as it is. Why would you return home early? Doesn't make sense. It was November 5th when the English translation of Shanquella's death certificate, which was based on the autopsy report, was released. And this raised even more suspicions. 
The autopsy report described Shanquella's death as having occurred only 15 minutes after she suffered a severe spinal cord injury and an atlas luxation, which is a dislocation or separation of the skull base from the atlas bone, the first bone of the neck or spinal column. So 15 minutes after this injury occurred, she had died, according to the autopsy. But according to the police in the doctor's report, from the time the doctor got there to the time that Shanquella passed away, it was almost three hours. The autopsy report did not mention cardiac arrest or alcohol poisoning. Also, there was a section where police could have noted if she had been intoxicated. But they didn't. They only said that she had been found unconscious in the living room. Since the autopsy report was released, Shanquella's mother tried to speak with her travel companions about why it wasn't adding up to what they had said actually happened. And ever since that day, they have not spoken with the family again. Shanquella's family paid $6,000 to have her body flown back to North Carolina on November 12, 2022. As soon as Salamandra saw her daughter's body, she knew this was no accident. There were clear signs of trauma, including bruising, a knot to the top of her head, a swollen eye, as well as a cut lip. For more than two weeks, her family attempted to convince authorities in the United States as well as Mexico to take a further look into their daughter's death because it was not adding up to what they said it was. But instead of being helpful, the United States State Department said that there was no obvious sign of foul play, so they would not be investigating any further. Yet there was now a video circulating of a woman violently attacking Shanquella very soon before her death. Her family said that this statement was completely unacceptable from the United States State Department. This video that had started going viral was of a naked Shanquella being viciously beaten by one of her female travel mates in a bedroom of their vacation villa. Salamandra confirmed that it was indeed her daughter that was being attacked in the video. And even though it's light outside in this video, it's unknown exactly when this attack happened. Shinquella's attacker had gone into a frenzied rage, punching her in the head, pulling her hair, and throwing her to the ground. There were also at least two other people in the room. There was a male who was filming the incident, and then there was another male that you could hear who was filming the person filming the incident. In the video, you can also hear a male voice speaking to Shanquella, saying, Quella, can you at least fight back? At least something? To which Shanquella replied, no, she didn't want to fight. It was later confirmed that the person speaking had been Khalil, her best friend, who was not stepping in, but rather filming this happening. Another amazing best friend, like the last video. It was also confirmed after speaking with the concierge at the villa that the person in the video attacking Shanquella was Dejeuner. People were questioning why the suspects and or witnesses in a homicide investigation were freely allowed to return to the United States without any arrests or interrogation. Then on November 16th, under a ton of pressure, Mexican authorities reopened the case looking into Shanquella's death as a possible femicide. They confirmed that investigators had gone back to the crime scene to collect more evidence so that they could more accurately assess the events that happened in the villa that day. Authorities are also investigating the actions of the doctor, two officers of the local police force, and the investigating state attorney with regards to negligence and official misconduct of duties. Just two days later, the FBI field office in Charlotte, North Carolina, announced that they were opening an investigation into the cause of Shanquella's death. They had also received the video of the attack. On November 23rd, 2022, Mexican authorities announced that an arrest warrant had been issued. They only said that it was a female who was the main aggressor in Shanquella's attack, and they were the suspect of the femicide. The attorney general also clarified Shanquella's death making sure the public knew that she had not died of alcohol poisoning, but rather from a direct assault causing a spinal cord fracture. A few days later, on November 28th, Dejeuner Jackson was arrested by Interpol agents. 
She was then sent to await extradition to Mexico. The concierge who had been assigned to the villa where Shanquella and the other travel mates had been staying told police that he noticed when the group first arrived, Shanquella didn't seem to fit in. She was rather quiet and reserved. She didn't look like she was there to party like the others did. She was the last one to arrive for dinner the night before her death and just looked very out of place. The concierge also said that after Shanquella Robinson was pronounced dead, he wanted to give the group a little bit of room so that they could grieve. So he stepped outside of the villa. But only moments later, he heard them inside laughing about something. I don't know how you could laugh about anything that soon after a friend's death. A few hours later, Dejeuner had texted the concierge, asking for him to set up a ride so they could go to dinner. He did this, but he later found out that the driver had dropped them off at a hotel that was close to the airport. They said they were going to eat. However, they snuck their way over to the airport, got on a plane, and went back to the United States. They knew that if they stayed there, they were most likely going to get arrested and questioned by the Mexican authorities at some point. So they got out of there as fast as they could. One of the members of the group, Nazir Wiggins, said that he arrived the day after the rest of the group did. He said he arrived on the Saturday, the same day that Shinquella ended up passing away. He said that when he got there, his friend seemed ill and disheveled. Nazir said that he was unaware that a fight had occurred. He remembers getting off of his flight at 2.16 p.m. that day and then calling the group to get the address so that he could head to the villa. It was at that point that they told him that Shanquella was feeling unwell. He says he arrived to the villa at 3.26 p.m. and when he got there, Shanquella was slumped over the toilet. The rest of the group was nowhere to be found. He had to walk around the villa in order to find them. They weren't even there with Shanquella when she was supposedly suffering from alcohol poisoning in their mind. You think you would still be there for them, but what do I know? Nazir said that he rubbed Shanquella's back and tried to comfort her until the doctor arrived. Another video had surfaced that Shanquella had actually taken prior to her death. She's heard joking with her travel mates about taking too long to get ready inside the villa. It don't take that long to get naked, hoes. Where y'all at? She told me I'm gonna keep it hot. You gonna keep it hot? What? They, what Gold said, they croup. <laughs> So a lot of people have pointed out, if you look at the body language of these friends, it looks very much like they were talking about Shanquella right before she entered the room. Like they were plotting the attack on her possibly at that time. It's also been theorized that directly after this video was taken, Shanquella went back into her room to put on her bathing suit. And that's when they came and attacked her, which is why in the video she was seen naked because she was in the middle of putting her swimsuit on. It has also been said that there is a second video out there of Shanquella. It's after the fight with Dejeuner, and Winter Donovan puts her arms around Shanquella's neck and body and slams her into the ground. After that, she doesn't get back up again. Shanquella's father, Bernard, believes the attack on his daughter was a setup, and he thinks that the group actually planned it before they even got to Mexico. He knows that his daughter does not like to fight, which is pretty evident in the video as she doesn't fight back at all. It's theorized that the attack was out of jealousy. Jealousy that Shanquella was doing so well in life, so well that she had paid for the villa for the entire stay, which was said to be around $1,600 a night. But instead of putting efforts into their own lives and making their lives better, so they didn't have to be jealous, they instead took away Shanquella's life. On March 3rd, 2023, Shanquella's family and supporters went to hold a demonstration in Washington, D.C. to demand diplomatic intervention and justice for Shanquella. Ten days later, the family's attorney sent a letter to President Joe Biden. The letter included an 18-page packet including Shanquella's autopsy 
as well as unreleased documents from prosecutors and police. In the letter to President Biden, it clearly states that one of two things needs to be done. Either the United States extradites Shanquella's killer so that she can be prosecuted there, or they keep her here and prosecute her in this country. One or the other. The family says that taking no action is not acceptable at this point. In April of 2023, an autopsy conducted of Shanquala's body by the Mecklenburg County Medical Examiner's Office, which is located in North Carolina, found that Shanquala's spine was intact. This finding directly contradicts the findings of the Mexican authorities, who said that she died from a broken spine. Her family had gotten the autopsy done by a U.S. medical examiner after there were so many questions brought up about her cause of death. A summary of the report says that the brain, dura, and spinal cord were sent for neuropathology consultation. The medical examiner says that based on the autopsy reports, Shanquella's cause of death is undetermined. Though there was a hematoma found on her forehead that would be consistent with blunt force trauma. But on April 12, 2023, the U.S. attorney announced that there was not enough evidence to prosecute for the murder of Shanquella Robinson. They said that based on the autopsy and careful deliberation, the available evidence does not support a federal prosecution. Shanquella's funeral was held on November 19, 2022, and it was held at the Macedonia Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Her casket was brought into the church by a horse-drawn carriage. Loved ones wore pink in her honor, and hundreds of other people showed up to say goodbye to Shanquella Robinson. On January 9th, 2023, a balloon release was held in honor of Shanquella Robinson's birthday. It was held at Memorial Gardens in Charlotte. Dozens of people showed up to release balloons in honor of what would have been her 26th birthday. <laughs> Well, thank you for listening to all of Shanquella's story today. This better not be all of her story. It's outrageous that the United States says they don't have enough evidence to prosecute anybody when there's very clear evidence of an attack. There's a video of Shanquella getting beaten up and not fighting back. Her travel mates said she had alcohol poisoning and then it was later discovered that she did not have that much alcohol in her system at all. They also lied about where they were going, saying they were going out to dinner, but instead fled to the airport in Mexico. Shanquella needs justice, and the people that were there, not just the person that attacked her, but everybody that was there and watching this happen and not helping her, needs to be punished. Right now, they're walking around completely free. So as it stands, they're getting away with murder. However, I did see in my research that some of the Cabo Six actually got jumped and beaten up just a few weeks ago. There were a couple people at a nightclub called Electric Tequila who recognized them and then beat them up outside, I guess. So I guess that's a little bit satisfying, but not nearly enough. So if you do like true crime and you want to hear it from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and click that notification bell so you know every time I post a new video. All right, thanks for watching A Wicked World. Until next time, guys, take care. Bye. Thank you for being patrons of A Wicked World. Adina, Angela, Catherine, Lindsay, and Mel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now, there's even more of A Wicked World on Patreon. You'll have access to exclusive videos each month and more. Any support truly helps to make sure the victims never get forgotten and to highlight the shortcomings of society associated with each case. So check it out at patreon.com slash a wicked world or use the Patreon app.